Greetings and welcome to uh, the first video in the series that I'm going to be doing called uh, The Good Stuff. So what this video series is going to be are all of the really juicy, awesome things that I've found in the PC3 um, or that I've learned about that you can do on the PC3. Um, generally speaking, we're going to be working in program mode, but I'll probably do a couple that cover some of the cool things you can do in setup mode and, and in, and in uh, other modes as well. <clears throat> so for this first um, good stuff video, I want to talk about how to make your own anti-aliasing oscillator using one of the oscillators that uh, causes aliasing. Uh, so uh, let's start with our default program. We're going to hit edit. I'm going to go ahead and pick a key map here of a single cycle waveform like I usually do and we're going to set key track to zero. Okay, we've got levels fine and everything like that. So let's go to the ALG page. Now, I'm going to pick for my oscillator here Shape Saw. Shape Saw uh, essentially is a waveform that can change between a sine wave and a sawtooth wave and do so uh, continuously. The problem with Shape Saw is it aliases. For instance, if I play some high notes, you can hear that aliasing. It's very loud and, and, and really noticeable. I want to take the aliasing out of this oscillator so that I can have a, a, a shaped waveform that I can vary between a sawtooth wave and a sine wave, um, but that won't alias. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and hit edit here and go to shape. Okay, and let's go to the DSP mod page. Now, in order to do this, I have to make the wave shape vary by which key I'm playing. Basically what I want to do is I want it to sound just a bit more like a sine wave uh, with each, each key that I play as I go up the keyboard. Um, what this does is this removes some of the higher harmonics and those higher harmonics are what actually causes aliasing. They go above what's called the Nyquist frequency and get reflected back down and that's what you hear as, as aliasing. So to get rid of those harmonics, as I play higher up on the keyboard, I want this to sound just a bit more essentially like a sine wave. So let's set that up right now. First of all, I'm going to set the depth all the way up to 127. Okay, now for source 1, I'm going to set up two functions. The first function is going to be the function that, that, that gives me what I want. Namely, it's going to um, make it so that as I play up the keyboard, um, the, the waveform changes just enough to prevent aliasing. So if we go back, for instance, here to the DSP mod page, and I set this to fun one. Okay, I'm going to now start playing up the keyboard. Now let's play up higher. And lo and behold, our aliasing is gone. Now that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you how to control this. Um, not So that not only does it not alias, but you can control the wave shape then with a slider. So I'm going to pick data as my slider, and I'm going to pick um, Fun one is my input here, and just do A plus B. Then we go back to the DSP mod page, and instead of fun one, I'm going to pick fun two. Now, as I play and move the slider, I can change my wave shape. Now the cool thing is, is that this won't alias. Okay, so even though I'm, I can change my wave shape, it won't aliases. And so I now have an anti-aliasing oscillator whose uh, wave shape can change. Um, and so this can be useful for all sorts of different things. Uh, just like on those cooking shows where they show you the dish after it's been made, I'm going to show you a program that I made using this um, uh, earlier when I was uh, playing around and when I discovered this neat little trick. This is called shaped AA, meaning shaped anti-aliasing. Okay, so uh, let's just look at this real quick. Basically what I have are three layers, okay? that all more or less look the same. If we go to the ALG page, you can see it's the same algorithm. Okay, if we go to the DSP mod page and we look at shape, this is where the fun stuff happens. Okay, notice how I have RAND V2 here as my depth control, LFO1 is my source, 2, and I have a min depth and a max depth of minus 1 and plus 1. What that means is, is that um, my LFO, and I'm going to go to the LFO here, let's find it, is going to be controlling the wave shape just a tad to provide some variation over time. So as you hold down a key, the wave shape doesn't remain static, it kind of evolves over time. 
and this this LFO is relatively slow. It um, it goes from a quarter of a second to about um, eight tenths of a second, and its rate is controlled by another random number, ran v1. So the rate is going to vary um, randomly over time, and the depth is going to vary randomly, but it's just a little bit of depth, and, and the LFO is slow enough that, that the evolution over time is, is, is relatively slow. So let me, um, let me just dial up something real quick here with this sound. I only have two sliders assigned. Slider A um, determines the wave shape, okay, whether it's sine or saw or somewhere in between, and slider B uh, controls the tuning between the three layers. So let me turn to the tuning all the way down. Now I'm going to vary my wave shape here. I'm going to turn this up a bit. I'm going to hold a note for a minute here, and I want you to listen to it as I hold it. Now, it's probably really subtle, and I don't know that it comes across on this um, on, on my cell phone camera, but um, you can kind of hear the wave shape mod um, modulate a little bit over time. So now let's throw in some detuning. And I'm going to back this off a bit more towards a sine wave. go so now we have more like chorusing turn that down now one thing that this is really cool for I'm gonna exit out here so I can is uh, for, for bass sounds uh, for instance like this Let's turn it up a bit here so it comes across on the camera. And so you can get all sorts of like these sort of growling bass sounds. that also have a fair amount of character. Um, I don't know necessarily that they would rival the Moog Taurus, because um, I don't have one to compare it with, but to me, um, you have a whole world of sort of bass sounds that are that are in here that are, are really big and, and, and would really rattle the walls if I turned everything up all the way. So that's it for this uh, Good Stuff video. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy the good stuff you learned, and I will see you next time.